June 9, 1944. The Royal Navy destroyer HMS Onslow is under attack in the frigid waters of the Arctic, escorting a convoy of Norwegian, British and American merchant ships filled with supplies bound for Murmansk in the Soviet Union. German Heinkel 111 torpedo bombers roar overhead, determined to sink the convoy and cripple the Allied war effort. The fleet's anti-aircraft gunners spring into action, their weapons blazing into the night. Among the guns defending the convoy is several 40mm Bofors L60, a Swedish masterpiece that has already earned its reputation as the finest anti-aircraft weapon of its time. As the Onslow and its companions fight back, the Bofors guns prove their worth, their devastating firepower and unmatched accuracy, saving the crew from near certain destruction. The convoy makes it through, and the Bofors name is etched into history as a symbol of reliability and innovation in modern warfare. This moment encapsulates the essence of Beaufort's innovation, reliability, and life-saving firepower. From humble beginnings as a Swedish ironworks supplier to becoming a global leader in weapons manufacturing, Beaufort's has left an awesome mark on military history. Its evolving lineup of weaponry, from the iconic 40mm anti-aircraft gun to state-of-the-art guided munitions, reflects a legacy of adapting to the ever-changing demands of warfare. Beaufort's has been so influential on the anti-air industry that navies still call their anti-aircraft guns Beaufort's, even if they're often made by other suppliers. In order to bring some local knowledge to this video, I've invited my good Swedish friend Jonas to help me with the narration of this video. Thanks, Max. Let's start with some history. Beaufort's was founded in 1646 as a small ironworks company producing industrial materials like steel and iron. For over two centuries, it played a vital role in Sweden's burgeoning industrial economy. The ever-expanding Swedish Empire, a growing European superpower under the influence of Gustav Adolphus, needed iron for guns, rivets, nails and equipment. For about 200 years, Beaufort's mainly produced basic ironwares. However, the late 19th century marked a turning point for the company. Under the leadership of Alfred Nobel, the inventor of dynamite and a major shareholder, Beaufort shifted its focus toward weapons manufacturing. Nobel modernized the company's operations and introduced innovative production techniques, enabling Beaufort to transition into the defense industry. The man that would later devote almost his entire fortune to peace and science had turned a relatively small factory into a world-leading center of military technology. By the early 20th century, Bofors was producing artillery for the Swedish military, laying the foundation for its future as a global weapons manufacturer. The company's engineering expertise and focus on quality set it apart, but its true rise to prominence came in the 1930s with the creation of a weapon that would define its legacy. Beaufort's defining moment came in 1934 with the introduction of the 40mm L60 anti-aircraft gun. Designed to counter the growing threat of aircraft in modern warfare, the 40mm gun was a masterpiece of engineering. It offered a high rate of fire, exceptional accuracy and unparalleled reliability. Adopted by over 18 nations, including the United States, the United Kingdom, Germany, the Netherlands and Sweden, the 40mm became one of the most widely used weapons of World War II. Its versatility allowed it to be mounted on naval vessels, ground vehicles and stationary platforms, providing critical air defense in every theater of war and in particular in the Allied convoy system which we started this video with. By all accounts, the Bofors L60 is the only artillery piece that was active in the German Army, the US Army, the Soviet Army and the Chinese Army at the same time during World War II. This speaks volumes to its ease of use and adaptation to different theatres of war. After World War II, Bofors built on its wartime success by expanding its product lineup to meet the evolving needs of modern militaries. The post-war years saw the company diversify its offerings, creating weapons for land, sea, and air combat, using their by now extremely profitable base as a launch pad into development. 
The first major weapon to achieve international success for Bofors after World War II was the 57mm naval gun, which was released in the 1950s. At the time, it had the most advanced targeting system on the market, and even to this very day, the 57mm is proudly defending most NATO nations' older warships, though with mid-life upgrades, taking the targeting systems to new heights every so often. The 57mm is also to be found in several of Sweden and Finland's coastal forts, though these are no longer active. The L60 also saw a massive upgrade during the 1950s, with longer range, advanced radar systems, much faster targeting and higher quality barrels. While its older sibling was produced in much larger quantities, the L-70 was likely the most advanced anti-air system until the advent of the heat and radar-seeking missiles later on in the Cold War. The improvements incorporated in the L-70 not only enhanced its operational capabilities, but also set a new standard in anti-aircraft defense technology. Notably, the L-70 featured a significantly improved firing rate and a more robust targeting mechanism that could track faster and smaller targets, making it a formidable tool against the increasingly sophisticated aircraft of the era. These advancements underscored a pivotal shift in defense strategies, emphasizing the need for speed and precision in military technology. A personal Cold War favorite of mine is the Carl Gustav, which saw its first prototype in 1946. With the first completed unit introduced in 1948, this multi-role anti-tank weapon quickly became one of Bofors most enduring designs. Its versatility and ease of use have made it a staple of infantry units worldwide, with modern iterations still in production. Over the decades, the Carl Gustav has been updated continuously to meet the changing demands of modern warfare. These updates have included enhancements in ammunition technology, sighting systems, and portability which have significantly extended its service life and effectiveness on the battlefield. The weapon's ability to fire a variety of ammunition types makes it uniquely adaptable for different combat scenarios, ranging from anti-tank and anti-personnel roles to smoke and illumination. Consequently, it is not only a favorite among soldiers for its reliability and firepower, but also highly regarded for its tactical flexibility. The Cold War period also marked the beginning of Bofors' increased focus on large-caliber artillery systems. The introduction of the 155mm howitzers represented a significant advancement in firepower. Sweden's take on artillery was a massive counter to both NATO and Soviet systems. They needed to be more autonomous and less demanding on the soldiers operating it. Moreover, the adoption of modular charge systems allowed for adjustable propellant quantities enabling the same gun to perform across various ranges and power requirements. Adding an essential layer of flexibility in modern military operations, Sweden was at the absolute forefront of propellant research. When the VK-155 was introduced in the 60s, it was the fastest loading artillery system in the world. It could fire 15 shells in 45 seconds, double the rate of fire of the best self-propelled gun in the Soviet Union at the time. All of this artillery heritage has led to the latest iteration of Swedish artillery firepower, the Archer. It has many of the same qualities of its Bofors predecessors, quick firing, automatic loading, remote controls, and most of all, a staggered simultaneous impact capability. It has proven its incredible worth in Ukraine, and friends in the Ukrainian army rated, along with the Caesar, as the best traditional systems they've received from the West. The RBS-70 was developed by Bofors in response to the increasing threat of aircraft and helicopter attacks, with an emphasis on versatility and effectiveness under different combat conditions. The original system featured a laser guidance system that required the operator to manually track the target until impact, making it immune to most countermeasures of the time. Its initial design was particularly valued for its accuracy and the ability to engage targets at various altitudes, including very low-flying or ground-level threats. Since its inception, the RBS-70 has seen numerous upgrades to enhance its capabilities and keep it relevant in modern warfare. These upgrades have included improved sighting devices, enhanced missile propulsion systems, and the integration of advanced targeting technology. One significant enhancement was the introduction of the automatic target tracker, which substantially improved hit probability by aiding the operator in maintaining the target within the site and enhancing the guidance accuracy. 
the latest version of the system, the RPS-70NG, represents a significant leap forward in terms of technology and capability. Introduced in early 2011, the RBS-70NG includes an integrated thermal imager for improved night and adverse weather operation and a higher resolution site compared to its predecessors. The system also boasts an improved missile with a greater range and a heavier warhead. Moreover, the RBS-70NG maintains the laser beam riding guidance system, which continues to be resistant to jamming and electronic countermeasures. A company like Bofors is always looking to develop with the times and with the advent of the war in Ukraine and drones becoming such a massive factor in warfare, Bofors is using its incredible anti-air capability to find a hard counter. Firstly, they came up with the Triton, which is essentially an automated Bofors anti-air cannon on a truck which is specialized in anti-drone warfare. It will have automatic targeting and be capable of being remote controlled. The gun on the truck is the newest iteration of the weapon we started this episode talking about, now called the Mark IV Naval Gun. It is edging up towards 90 years of service, and it is still the most widely adapted anti-air cannon in the NATO arsenal. It will be on many new naval ships, including the Royal Navy's new frigates, the Dutch and Belgian Navy's new ships of all classes and many more. From the most effective anti-air gun in the Second World War, to the ever-evolving technological edge that it brings, Bofors continues to play an integral role in Sweden's military might. Sweden might not have the largest armed forces, but they make up for it with a defense sector that keeps evolving with the time. They're ahead on many things and will likely continue to be ahead for years to come. It will be exciting to see what Bofors comes up with, but I expect anti-drone laser weapons is high on the agenda. Be sure to check out our series of videos where we dive into the finest Swedish-made gear and explore how Sweden serves as a powerful deterrent to Vladimir Putin's strategies in the Baltic. If you're interested in cutting-edge defense technology and international security dynamics, these videos are definitely for you. Now for a quick channel update, thanks to some unexpected twists in our NATO mission over in Estonia. I'm packing my bags for deployment at the end of January. This means I'll soon be trading my microphone for some military gear for a while. Recording voiceovers in the field? Yeah, not so easy unless I fancy becoming the daily roast among my squad mates. So, get ready to hear more from my Nordic pals, Magnus, Jonas, and a couple of mystery guests I've yet to introduce. While I'll still be the driving force behind what we cover, I'll chip in whenever I'm not dodging latrine duties. The microphone will be handed over to voices fresher than a Scandinavian breeze. For some, this switch might be a relief. I mean, let's be honest, I do sound a bit like a Volvo 240 struggling on a frosty Finnish morning. For others, my whiskey voice might be missed. But don't worry, I'll be back before you know it, and my deployment is still months away. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video. If there's anything in particular that you think we should cover, let us know in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed the old videos I got from my good friends up at Bofors. There's nothing quite like 80s hairstyles. Have a good one, folks.